Getting ready for the uh, the Pope's uh, what is known as his Urbi at Orbi. At Uh, is, is addressed. Hello and welcome loyal viewers of the UKC Lower Valley and tuning in around the world to this week's edition of MTV's <laughs> Team Action News. It is March 14th, 2013. I cannot believe already halfway through March. I and know. It was a month ago that uh, Valentine's Day took place. Yeah, this year 2013 is flying by so make sure to tell everybody you love them and uh, Fulfill your, your New Year's resolutions. And fulfill your New Year's resolutions. Very important. If it's like right taking a trip, this is the perfect time. Spring break's just around the corner. It is. I'm loving the weather right now. We're kind of on the iffy. A lot of sunshine, a lot of rain, and in between those gloomy days. So we need enjoy to enjoy these. Pray for snow, though. In pray the hills. For, pray for snow. Pray we for could, snow in the we hills. Could use it. We could use it. We love that. Uh, and also what we loved was the American Idol little competition that we had last week and I hope you guys enjo enjoyed it. We had a bunch of people voting, which was awesome. Thank you everybody for calling in. Not like the votes matter because Nolan's a cheater. He's actually the I'm one taking I don't know why the you calls. That. So I, I, I mean, it's Jeff, just fishy. because you have it's three, it's I have two. Aaron has one and Eddie has six votes. Congratulations, Eddie. Great job. But unfortunately, somebody always has to go home. You know who is making it to the top, and that is a local, a former Olympian, Patrick Deneen. Congratulations for winning the 2013 World Championship for Dual Moguls. This took place in Voss, Norway. Congratulations, Patrick Deneen. We're looking forward, I'm looking forward to the next Olympics. So yeah, the Winter Olympics coming up are going to be great. You can keep up the great work, and our hometown hero, the U.S. Olympian, Patrick Deneen, taking some uh, podium finishes within a week, two of them. We are all rooting for you Woo. down here at the Channel 40 office. Great job. And congratulations to Gonzaga for being first in this year's NCAA basketball. Way to go, Gonzaga, coming up March Madness, March 19th. Get your brackets ready. This is going to be an exciting time. I know. I'm I'll have a, my bracket ready. Jeff will be out very I will very, be a millionaire. No, you always get out the very first round. Early April. You have terrible brackets. No, I have you great do. brackets. I actually won two years ago. Space. Hey, talking about winners though, we have two winners right here, Brad Ballard and Kate Lammer. Congratulations, you won two free movie tickets, a tub of popcorn, and two pops to the world famous Roslyn Theater. And we still have three movie tickets left, those uh, packets. So give us a call 649-3940 or Facebook us and you can win some of these great movie tickets and watch an awesome movie, Oz the Great and Powerful. And let's go check out our movie review from Randy. Hey, it's Randy Winkler again, your friendly neighborhood movie reviewer. I'm back, and I'm doing three movies this week. Uh, uh, Silver Linings Playbook, uh, Escape from Planet Earth, and uh, Oz the Great and Powerful. I can't rave enough about Silver Linings Playbook. It, it's already been through town, but if you get a chance to see it, or later on rent it, whatever, you got to see it. Jennifer Lawrence's performance is she won the Academy Award for Best Actress, and uh, the other the, her co-star could have also if if Lincoln hadn't been out, uh, and it just is a really really down to earth movie. It's not a fluff piece, uh, so don't don't skip it because you think it's a romantic comedy because it isn't. <laughs> I almost left it so heavy, but it got really good towards the end. So uh, go see it. I highly recommend it. My next movie is uh, Escape from Planet Earth, and this is the first uh, cartoon movie in quite a while that I can definitely say, take your kids to it. They will really enjoy it. It's not so much an adult cartoon like Shrek or some of the, some of the ones that have come out recently where they have like hidden adult humor in it and stuff like that. It's just a straightforward, good, fun cartoon about aliens and stuff, and uh, kids will really enjoy it, I'm sure. And the last movie I say, best for last, uh, Oz the Great and Powerful. Now, I've already heard one person didn't like it, 
but I can't believe that because it's so awesome. Uh, it follows the same basic, it's a prequel to uh, The Wizard of Oz, and it follows the same basic patterns in a sense because they start out black and white when, when they're in Kansas, and then when they get to the land of Oz, then everything's colorful and stuff. Uh, and the story's really great, the actors are really great, the special effects are really great. Go see it, it's a wonderful time. Uh, I'd also like to say keep donating to the Roslyn Theater. They're almost there, and it's very cool that everybody's helped them out so much. So uh, keep doing that and going there, and don't forget to watch In TV on Channel 40. Thank you, Randy, for that movie review. Silver Linings Playbook, make sure to check it out. That won a bunch of awards and Escape from Planet Earth. I don't know much about that, but thank you for that movie review. Great job. Oz was splendid, though. It was. Jeff and I had the pleasure to go watch that, the world-famous Rosin Theater, and it was a great movie. Check it out. And again, you can win some free movie tickets just by giving us a call or Facebook us. Hope Source is in dire need of some cat food. So if you have any cat food laying around the house that's being unused, be sure to go down to Hope Source and then turn it into them. They'll be more than happy to take it. Or if you'd like to donate to Hope Source, you can call the number below. 674-2251. Sons of Italy Spaghetti Feed is coming up, so make sure to get your appetites ready. This is going on April 6, 2013 from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Cleom Eagles. Adults are $12 and kids are $6. Remember, Sons of Italy Spaghetti Feed, mark it on the calendar, and don't miss this event at the Cleom Eagles, April 6th. The High Pocket Hope Run is going to be taking place on May 4th at 9 a.m. 5K run slash walk in memory of K High Pocket's Halty. The run will be starting in South Cleom. They're trying to raise $2,500 for Relay for Life. Discover passes are now on sale for the Upper Kittitas County. They're $30 for all year, $10 a day, and $2 transaction fee is applied. Ugh, that transaction fee, that's they what always have those. But that's hey, gets, yeah. you gotta have these to get out in the trails, and these funds go to keeping those trails well maintained, so please get these uh, Discover passes before you go into the wilderness, because you will get a ticket. And I've gotten one and they're not fun. They are not. I've gotten one too at the boat launch. I had like a IOU on Discover Pass in the window. <laughs> yeah, you can't go with that. <laughs> Arf Doggy Easter Egg Hunt is coming up March 23rd. Registration starts at 1245 and it will be at the Coal Miner Trail in Roslyn. Registration is only $5 and baskets are provided. All dogs must be on a leash. And for more info, call Lori Clemente at 304-4805. If you have not already heard, Scotty Templin is the new president of the Raza Museum, and we have an interview with him and Fred Krueger. Hello, I'm Frederick Krueger, uh, retired uh, educator from the Cleelum Roslyn Schools. Uh, came here in 1967. Uh, at the time when uh, c communities here were on the skids when the mines had closed and I have since retired and I have dropped by to the Roslyn Museum to look at some photos that they had questions on and uh, while I'm here uh, all of a sudden Roslyn has come alive again. Uh, all the displays and everything bring back a lot of memories. I used to use some of this uh, material in my classroom for my students and the local history class at the high school. You can take American history that's often recorded on the East Coast and transport it right here to Roslyn and you can study American history here in Roslyn. This museum is American history. If you're new to the area and you're just visiting, this would be a plus. You would want to stop here. If you're moved into the area, uh, you're, you're already owning part of Roslyn history because the whole city is a historic district. So if you have a home here, you're automatically an owner of Roslyn history. Uh, we are uh, in the midst of uh, kind of restructuring the the uh, museum as far as uh, you know, kind of the museum policy and and how we run it. Um, but we're we're going to try to we're going to keep the uh, 
you know, the feel of the Rosa Museum, keep that the same. And uh, basically my, my biggest goal right now is to get everything, uh, everything in the museum in uh, a safe environment and uh, cataloged and archived and, uh, and basically preserved for the future. It's a big challenge, but uh, you know, if it's, uh, it's, it's, if it's easy, it's not really worth anything. You know, as far as I'm concerned, the things that are the hardest are the ones that are worth, worthwhile. Right. Yeah, uh, and it's really important that we save the stuff for the future and, and pass it on. We're going to try to uh, be a little bit more open with working with uh, with the town and hopefully get the schools more involved. Um, the museum has been uh, here since 1961, and since then we've been able to uh, run on just the donations at the door. But um, things are changing, and we uh, we can't uh, afford to do that anymore. We're going to try to try to implement some fundraising uh, policies and. Uh, maybe have a membership we're not exactly sure how we're going to do it but we're in the in the middle of rewriting uh basically our uh you know our mission statement and our uh in our goals for the next uh you know five to ten years and um hopefully we can uh you know we'd like to make this the uh the hub of the wheel of the heritage of this county Thank you, Scotty Templin and Fred Kruger for those interviews. Awesome job down there, Scotty, and keep up the great work on preserving the Rosin Museum. With Fred Kruger's help, you will do an amazing job. That's a great historian right there to have on your side. And now let's move on to Civic News. First off, let's run up to Roslyn City Council, where the City Council met this last Tuesday at 7 o'clock on the 12th, and they talked about trail reports with the CAC. Scott Gray, 205 South First, uh, your most recently appointed CAC member, so thank you for that. And I'm a junior member, so that's probably why I'm here. <laughs> so the design charrette was uh, finalized and presented, uh, we were presented to the City Council. Obviously, it involves uh, residents of the community and uh, some design professionals. We've got some nice drawings out of that. We had a lot of uh, people invited in to look at the design, the drawings, the renderings, kind of where the trails are going to be, uh, where the, the wildlife corridors are going to be, and that type of thing. Dusty Fields was also hired as a Public Works employee, and congratulations to him. Yep, great job, Dusty. I know he'll do a great job on the Roslyn City crew. On the same night, the Cleveland City Council met and they discussed ways of making the high school basketball program improve. And they thought of an idea of putting basketball hoops at the skateboard park, which was conveniently cleaned a couple weeks ago, I have to say, by Bubba and Jim and the rest of the Cleveland City crew. Good job on that. It looks really nice. But hopefully they can get these basketball hoops in the skateboard park and hopefully make our high school basketball program even better. And that concludes Civic News. Stop Pacific Clean. This is a protest that is going on in regards to our community. This is terrible. All the West Siders are trying to bring in their garbage and biohazard waste over here and put it in our lovely elk hike. Now calm down, Skeeter. He ain't hurting nobody. No. And they're just calling it compost. So they're making it sound a lot cleaner. So please attend these meetings at Sunlight Waters every Tuesday at 6.30 if you can. Uh, that's out in Elk Heights and try to voice your opinion get out there and make a stop to all this garbage that's coming over from Seattle which is their feces and whatever and dumping it in Elk Heights. It is a terrible thing that's taking place and it needs to be stopped. And luckily Eddie was there this last Tuesday to get some uh, interviews and to get the gist of what's going on at their weekly meeting. A facility like this would seriously disrupt the elk. The Rocky Mountain elk Yes. are on board and they, they uh, do stand in opposition. The city, uh, city councilman said, well, they haven't really studied about it because <clears throat> it doesn't concern them in Seattle. The gore blanket that they would put over top, but in the process, it's only over top part of the time. It is off for a lot of the time, and she found out the whole process and listed when it's on and when it's off, and as long as it's off, it's not doing any good, and who knows how much good. She, she talked about it being an experiment. It's an experiment here for them. You know, when you see their presentation, it's, it's kind of a nice little graphic, like a cartoon picture of a thing. It's not the torn gore fabric flapping in the wind and the fire and the smoke and the steam. And the, so, you know, so people 
have been approached so far. I've really been getting the Pacific Clean slab. They got 280 people filing a class action lawsuit against them. And, it, and, and the lady that did the article described this exact procedure, what they're talking about down here. They put the gore over the stuff and it's mm -hmm. in here. And they said that people could still smell that up to four miles away. I've been contacting all of the fire districts, the local fire districts. I've written letters to all eight, including uh, Snoqualmie Pass and the uh, fire marshal. I started researching the fire in uh, the, the plant by Issaquah, uh, Cedar Grove. Uh, that happened in 2009 in August. The Marysville. Plant. Yeah, several months before then, uh, they had submitted a, an application to Puget Sound Clean Air Act uh, uh, people to expand their, pro their their operation, and they described what they were using, and they were using the Gore system when it burned. So. Uh, it has nothing to do with fire safety. Thank you, Eddie, for getting that great footage. And if you have a voice and you are concerned about this, please write to Doc Hastings and to the address below. And please, let's get this stopped in the Kittitas County before it happens. It's very important. This is one of the things that I hate most to see take place in this oh, community. Yeah. This is terrible. So I mean, This is West Side garbage dumped on the here, east side. They just need to find a way to take care of it themselves, I think. In their yes. own neck of the woods. In their own neck of the woods. We don't take kindly to your types in here. Meeting at the post office happened this last Tuesday as well. What? Tuesday was a really busy day for all this stuff going yes, on. Yes, it was. And the South Cleom and Ronald post offices had meetings conducted in the middle of the day to talk with concerned citizens about time changes at their post offices. Also, Thorpe and Easton went through the same thing. Aaron was there to gather some footage at the Ronald meeting, which there were definitely some concerned citizens and some heated uh, questions to the USPS rep. My name is Karen Bacon. I'm the post office operations manager for this postal area here and I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to come down and find out what's going on here in Ronald. We're not here to close your post office. The commitment is to keep the post office in Ronald open and the reason that the commitment was made has a lot to do with the feedback that we got from your community. A survey was sent out about 30 days ago asking, basically explaining Throughout the Postal Service, the changes are being made um, pretty quickly and pretty rapidly. Yourselves, your neighbors, the people that you associate with, your friends, spoke up, and that's the reason we're not closing the office here in Ronald. So that's, that's the good news, hopefully, for you folks here. The part that is a little bit of a challenge, and it does require some adapting and will require some flexibility, is the fact that this office will be... Um, currently it's proposed to be open from 12 until 4. This meeting was set up right here. Mm -hmm. Now what if 200, 300 people had showed up today? The expectations of the Postal Service was not to have people mm -hmm. knowing the size of this determined. lobby. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what you're saying, we can't come in as you you know, U.S. citizens and use our post office and stand here with a petition, but it's okay for the people that set up this meeting to go ahead and set it up in here. Do you see my comparison? Mm -hmm. It's good for some people, but not for others. You said we should talk to our lawmakers. Is there mm -hmm. somebody within the Postal Service that could be direct, that we could direct questions? or sure. our, Could you get those names for us? Or? Who would that be? I didn't bring the name and number, but I will give it the uh, contact Mary person mm -hmm. to Mary Ellen. Oh, okay. And she'll be, yeah, yeah and she can share that with you. Whenever All right, folks, it sounds like you have awesome. some work that you plan to do. Thank you again for coming today. I, I appreciate it. Your comments and your concerns are important. I could see where the concern comes up and draws attention. I would be concerned too. I mean, it's kind of changing your whole schedule of the day a little bit, shifting yeah. a little bit. Well, yeah, they're only making it for four hours in a day or an hour in a day. I don't think that could work, yeah, especially they're dropping the mail off. The postmaster has to uh, deliver each to each box and then make sure in an hour that all the mail is delivered to each box. Yep. I don't see it happening. Yep, that's going to be tough. That's yeah. going to be a tough one. As for Warrior Sports, the baseball team is dominating. We're not used to really seeing this. We love to see it, though. We do. We love to see it. Spring sports is in the air, and Warrior Baseball is doing amazing, like Jeff just said, beating White Swan 
35 to 5 in a double header which improves their record to 4 and 0 on the season. These guys are dominating so make sure to get out there their next home game and check them out. Senior Caleb Wurzland hit a cycle the very first game. Congratulations to Caleb. That's big. This puts him at a 4 and 0 season as we speak right now. Meanwhile, on the tennis court in LaSalle, the Warriors tennis team didn't do as well. Walking away with only one singles win of the day. The tennis team drops their overall record to 2-1 and one with the boys and 1-2 and two with the girls. We'll keep up the great work, everybody, and we'll keep you guys informed with updates of uh, how the school sports are doing. And now let's go on to an interview with Kevin Larimer talking about the Upper Kittitas County Youth Baseball League. Hi, my name is Kevin Larimer, and I'm the president of the Upper Kittitas County Youth Baseball and Softball Association. This Saturday, March 16th, we are having our annual spring training and final registration sign up. The boys start at 10 a.m. and they last till 12 noon. The girls start at 1 p.m. and will last until 3. If you're interested in coaching or umpiring or any type of volunteering, please give me a call at 509-674-9426. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin Larimer, for taking the time out of your day to speak with us here at Channel 40. And to all of you out there, if you have a kid that would like to get involved in baseball, this is the perfect opportunity for that, and they need attendance. Yep, March 16th, this Saturday, get them registered and also have them there for their high school spring training session, which is very important, get them ready for the baseball season. Me and Nolan got the privilege, as well as Jared. Was. It's actually uh, Nolan and I. Nolan, Jared, and I got the privilege to hang up once again another barn quilt out in the Tianaway. Very cool thing. Great job, Jeff. Great job, Jared. Great job, it. Jacqueline Fawcett and Claire Lukey. Everybody that helped with this barn quilt looks great. and A lot went into it. Yeah, a lot went into this one. A lot went into it. It was uh, definitely... Um, how, the odds weren't it? really on our side. Yeah, how was it for you? It Sitting was there on the ground, no one was like... Pointing fingers. I was, Go the, over I was there. the PM. Go so now, when you're uh, driving by, past the Swak Tanaway Grange, you will see a beautiful barn quilt that was hung up by Jared and Jeff from Inland Networks and painted by the barn quilts of the Upper of the Kittitas County Association. So awesome thing right there, and a uh, very special thing to be a part of. Yes, it is, Nolan. And here's an interview with uh, Jacqueline Fawcett and Claire Lukey, and Claire also is going to be talking about the chili cook-off, which is going to be happening this Saturday, which you don't want to miss. Best chili in town. Well, I'm Jackie Fawcett. I'm the chairperson and project coordinator for Barn Quilts of Kittitas County. And this is our 22nd barn quilt that we hung on the Grange today. And uh, had a big crowd here, all wishing the project well. And your company came in and installed it for us. And it's the first barn quilt on a Grange in the state of Washington. We have six painted, ready to install, and I think we'll probably have 35 up by the end of April. We are hoping to create a self-guided driving tour for visitors to the county to read about the agricultural heritage of a lot of the farms that have been here for four, five, six, and six generations. And many of these barn quilts are based on family quilt patterns, and so they're also um, like a memorial to a quilter and a family. The design we chose commemorates the origin of the building. It was built in 1904 as a one-room school out here called the Ballard School and it served as a school for uh, local kids until 1937 when the uh, uh, schools were consolidated in Clallam. So even though that original building burned in 2004, we reconstructed to, to look very much like the original building and we are happy to be back here on the hills uh, on Ballard Hill Road. I'm really thankful to Jackie Fawcett for giving us this opportunity and to our members who have pitched in to design and paint and hang this and to Inland Net for bringing their trucks out here to lift this block in place. Uh, so I hope it's uh, you know something that will grace our building for years to come and recall our early history. Uh, this Saturday, uh, we are having our annual chili cook-off at the Grange. Doors open about 5:30. If you have a chili you'd like to enter, uh, bring it in, and we start our um, meal and judging at 6 p.m. If you don't make chili, just bring salad or dessert or rolls. Come by. It's um, real nominal charge for our entertainment. We have a cowboy singer and a cowboy poet. 
that will do entertainment to, from 7 to 9, and it will be a very, very fun event. We have prizes for first, second, and third chilies, and it's a fun evening, so I hope you'll consider coming out for, for that event, the Great Chalk. Thank you everybody for that great opportunity. Swat Tainaway Grange with that new barn quilt looks amazing. It great does. Job, it's just like a little beauty mark on the thing, you know? It looked gorgeous before, but now that's a, we just put up a piece of history. Yep, so now every time you guys drive by that, you will just say, well, I put that up. Oh, uh, yep. One to your kids, all yeah. 16 of them. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Okay, let's go on to some birthdays. birthdays. First off, we'd like to wish J.C. Powell and Amanda Soderstrom a very happy birthday this March 15th. On the next day, March 16th, happy birthday, Kieran Marquette and Bree Burgley. Kareen Wells and Teresa McFadden were born on March 17th. Happy birthday to you, too. Nice job, Jeff. <laughs> March 18th, Cody Vandervetter and Kat Coras. Happy birthday. On March 20th, happy birthday to Chelsea Gordon. Happy birthday, Chelsea. On March 21st, Lori Watts, Steven Shuda, Josh Stutz, Kevin Clausen, and Jeff's cousin, Jocelyn Slack. Happy birthday, cousin. Happy birthday. And if we missed your birthday, please don't let it happen again. Facebook us, email us, call us, so many ways of communication. There shouldn't be Tweet any us. reason. Tweet us. Tweet us. And if you have a business and you need to get some more foot traffic in that business, give us a call at 649 and we'd love to produce a commercial, like the farm and home commercial we have going on right now. Awesome job, Eddie. And awesome. so many ways of communication. And this has been a couple of words. Trying to shoot some local news for you. March 14th, 2013. I'm Noel Weiss. And I'm Jeffrey Jordison. Good night.